Amanda here from Create with Scrimpy Mama. So today I'm sharing the tutorial on how to create my vintage ballerina folio. It's called Easy Folio Project One um, because I'm going to be doing a series of these over the next few months. So this is Project One. Um, now you do need the cutting and scoring guide. It is in the description, linked in the description box below. If you're one of my Kofi subscribers, it's in the posts section. So if you scroll through the post, go and look for it. There's a link for you to download it for free. Um, so this is the cutting and scoring guide. Okay, lots of you have purchased it already. It's very straightforward. All of the pieces that we're going to use are all lettered. Okay, so you go through one by one, cut the pieces and then letter them. Okay, don't forget to letter them as soon as you've cut them. So what I do is I cut them all to size, letter them, and then I'll go back through and I will do the scoring. And then I'll go back through and if I'm using tape, I'll add tape. Okay, so um, we're going to get cracking. So I have used 200 GSM white cardstock. It's more than adequate by the time you've layered your paper on for a folio. It's more than heavy enough. Um, if you want to go heavier, that's up to you, but it's not necessary. Also, there is a window pocket on the front. Okay, you've got the measurements for the acetate. We're going to do that in the tutorial. If you don't have acetate, you can just leave it as a plain window without cutting the, um, you know, the, the hole, as it were. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to try and do this all in one video. So what you can do is save it to a playlist on your YouTube for you to refer back to. Because I do advise that you watch it all the way through um, before you start in case I have to make any adjustments to anything. <laughs> but it should work fine so save it to your playlist so you know where it is you can um pause the video at any time and follow along and catch up or rewind if you've missed something but we're going to do it all in one take hopefully <laughs> so we're starting with our a piece and our b piece okay so we've cut it to size we've done the scoring and we are adding tape or glue on the bumpy side so when you score let me find a piece that's so when you score a piece of card the side that you score on creates a dent okay it's like an a dent like a u-shape and the back side creates a bump so if i say the dented side that means that side and if we say the bumpy side it means the side with the bump okay sometimes we put our tape or our glue on different sides depending on where it's going to stick so when things stick to the back of something else often we put the glue or the tape on the bumpy side okay if it's going to stick on top then we would put our glue or our tape on the dented side. So you need to pay attention. So I've done my score in here. And when you score and you've got the dent, then that's the way you fold. Just in case you're brand new to paper crafting, that's the way you fold. So I've scored there and I'm going to fold in on that, that score because you've made the dent, you've broke the fibres, so that's the way you fold. Okay. So when we've got a long piece like this, we don't want this flat edge showing. We're going to line over with paper and the way we make it neat is by um, notching. So a notch is where you cut off at an angle, but you don't go right up to the score line. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. I've done all of my others. I'm just going to do this and then I'll show you. So I'm just about an eighth of an inch away from the score line and then I'm cutting at an angle. So hopefully you can see, so it's not right up to the score line. Hopefully it's not going all blurry. It's about an eighth of an inch away. Now that is not is notching. When we do pockets, we mitre and that's a different process. And I'll show you that as we go. But if we're just joining pieces, okay, then we notch. If we're making a pocket and we want it all to sit nicely, we mitre. There's a difference. <laughs> Okay, now I've used tape on mine. I do advise you use glue. Glue gives you time to um, 
it gives you wiggle room it gives you time to maneuver but if you are confident using tape then use tape so you've got piece a and piece b here turn piece b so that the um bumpy side's showing and we're just going to literally attach piece a to there okay now this is why i do advise glue because it's easier but it takes time to dry so it makes the video longer so you want it flush top to bottom and you want it just kissing that score line okay it's not over it not miles away from it just right touching up against it okay and then you're going to grab your c piece so again this has been scored and we have notched so not all the way to the score line about an eighth of an inch away it just comes with practice and we've got our tape on the bumpy side okay so we're going to turn it that way okay so we've got our bumpy side and we're going to glue on this half inch strip here and attach that to the back of a just attach so up flush with the top as straight as you can okay I'm trying to get mine straight i don't really like using tape but the video would be much much longer if i used glue okay so that attaches so that is in essence the base of your folio okay because that's going to fold like that and that's going to fold like that now it might seem flimsy to start with don't worry because we're going to strengthen with our layers and our pockets and then the patterned paper okay right so then we are immediately on to piece d so piece d is let me just get my cutting guide so i can remember <laughs> So we've done A, we've done B, we've done D. Right page, flat glue on the inside back. Right, so this is page D. So um, I have actually put my tape on the wrong side. So your tape on this would be on the dented side. If you put it on the wrong side, it doesn't matter. Just fold it that way. It's going to go... Where's this going? Right page flap. So it's going here. Okay. So it's going to attach to the inside of A there, okay? And we have notched. It's a few days since I made my original, so bear with me if I have to remind myself which pieces go where. <laughs> okay, so this is going to attach onto A up to the first score line, okay? You've got two score lines there where your flap is. It's going up to the first again on it but not over it not miles away and flush top and bottom i'm actually just going to twist mine that way just to make it easier for myself to line it up okay i'm all fingers and thumbs it's quite early in the morning and i've only had one coffee so <laughs> okay so that sticks on there. Now that, you will notice, has been cut ever so slightly smaller than the back piece. Okay? So as I go through the tutorials, I will also give you hints and tips for if you're designing your own. So if you're adding a page flip like that, you need to leave a small gap. So it needs to be ever so slightly smaller than the back. Otherwise, when you're closing, it's going to catch. So that's why that piece is ever so slightly smaller. Right, so now we're on to piece E okay which is here and this is the inside top flap so this is going to go so you need to open d fully extend it and it's going to go here and again it's going to go on the inside of a there okay so that it's nice and tidy and what it's doing is it's so it's strengthening it's strengthening as we go because we've got a flap there we've got a flap there um and it's strengthening okay so let's take our tape off there now on my original one i have rounded these corners so you can round the corners if you like just remember that if you round the corners on these you have to round the corners on the paper so it's up to you so another easy way to do it is to fold flat the first score line have the second score line there and then line it up like so okay so 
I'm trying my hardest not to get my hair in the shot. Now, again, this has been cut ever so slightly um, smaller than the width of the back. So you need to line it up central, not edge to edge. So this doesn't go score line to score line. Okay. That's a little bit too close to the score line for me. Let me try again. I'm just going to turn mine upside down. Okay, so you've got your two score lines here for A. It wants to go in the middle. You need to centralise it because, again, I've cut it ever so slightly. I've measured it ever so slightly smaller so that it doesn't catch when, you know, when you're flipping and flapping. Okay, there we go. So that's that one. Then you can re-engage. You've got a quarter of an inch gusset there at the top. Okay. So now we're going to do the bottom ones next. So that was E. So now we're on F. Okay. So F goes at the bottom. So same process. It goes at the bottom of your A piece. And this one is ever so slightly smaller than, oops, get off. Again, than the width. So you need to centralise it before you glue it down. Now, another good thing about using glue is, I'll tell you in a minute, you want these to kind of line up. Now, mine are not 100% lined up. Can you see? And that's because I've used tape. If I'd used glue, I could close that and I could wiggle this about and make sure that those are lined up perfect. Now, it doesn't matter in this instance because I've already done my perfect one here. This is just to show you which pieces go where. But there's another piece of advice. If you close that one and then put this one on and make sure that they kind of line up, it just looks neater. If they don't line up, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. Okay. So let's just move that out of the way. So now we have got piece G. So this is a pocket. Okay, let me do this. We've got two of these. Okay. So one goes on uh, the front of the flap. I think one's going on here and one's going on here. So I've done, I've left one that I've not mitered. So here's G1. You've also got G2. So you fold and burnish all of those scar lines. Let me just find my bone folder. This is what you do with pockets, and this is the difference between notching and mitering. So then you open it up, and you've got um, a small box there where the lines cross each other. When you're making pockets, you cut right across the centre of the X. Okay, right across the centre. Okay. And then what you want to do is fold those flaps down and make sure that they're not overlapping. Okay, that one's fine and that one's fine. And then give them another burnish. Because you don't want them overlapping because it adds bulk and it won't lay flat. Always give your pockets an extra burnish. Okay, so one's going to go on here, which is F. Okay, let me just check my main. <laughs> yeah, so one on there and the other one goes inside right okay <laughs> i've forgotten i've slept so um i'm gonna remove my tip so again when you're adhering a pocket onto anything that's got a gusset like these two flaps have got that quarter of an inch gusset there's your gusset there just push it flat okay so that you've got a flat edge rather than it being raised up just push it flat. Hopefully I'm in shot and you can see. I hope so because I don't want to have to redo it all. And then you attach this flush to the bottom and it will go flush edge to edge. It's been sized to go edge to edge. So we're not centralising it. We're going edge to edge and flush with the bottom. Okay, like so. And then your second G piece is going to go on the inside onto A again. So you can see that all these layers are slowly building up strength in the folio and then when you put your patterned paper on, 
you can add even more strength okay now these flaps here i've glued on the inside you could also glue them on the back if you so desired to help add strength but i just prefer it that way okay i won't over complicate it for this one as we get more advanced um i am going to be doing this kind of project minimum once a month maybe more um, some will be paid, some will, you know, will need a cutting guide and some I will give the measurements. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell. And then when the notification bell I menu drops down, click all. Otherwise you won't get notified when I upload things and you won't know that I'm here. So G2 is going on the bottom of A, okay? Lined up with the bottom first score line of that piece there so you'll see the edge that would have been the edge of a before we put this on that's where this is going to line up to okay and again it's going centralized is this one because it's ever so slightly smaller than the a piece okay but you also want to kind of line it up and make sure it lines up with this piece here so that when it's closed you don't see that it just looks neater okay so that is that bit done okay so that was g2 so now we're on to if g h <laughs> so our h pieces are really really simple now you will see so these are the h pieces all right let me show you the h pieces so the h pieces are, is this tuck here and this took here now like i say you can round the corners on your pages if you like it does look nice but it's extra work and also what you can do i've cut this i've given you the measurements wide enough so that you can use a fancy border punch down that edge if you so desire but you don't have to you can leave it plain but there is enough of a measurement there okay okay I may have to keep referring back so the h piece goes on the left hand side of the d piece when it's closed and the right hand side when it's opened i think that's what i did let me just check again i've blinked and forgotten ah no what i did was i put it near the spine so it when the that piece is closed one goes there and then when it's open the other one goes there and again the reason i've done that is because that layer of that pocket will then add strength to that flap okay so it's all about adding strength so we've done that on that side so on the other side we'll do that so then we've got strength there and strength there okay those are my folio making tips <laughs> always look how you can add strength now i'm going to use glue for these because these are not true pockets. A true pocket has a half an inch score on three sides and you fold it under. These are just tucks, okay? So what you need to do is a very thin bead of glue on three sides, okay? And then what I did was I did put a thin bead of glue across the middle, okay? So you need to gauge where your four by six photo mats go and just put a very small bead of glue down the middle so if i have one there let's have a look put my thumb there i've got one there so my glue just wants to go a very thin bead of glue down the center that just means that when you've got those in they're not sliding down okay and then a thin bead of glue on three sides you can use tape if you want but I don't like um, tape on tucks, and I'll tell you for why. Because tape never dries. It stays sticky forever, okay? And your photo mats will get stuck in that tape, okay? It will inevitably lift, and they will get stuck. Glue dries, all right? So that's why. So then this wants to go top to bottom, and it wants to go more or less flush but just leave a small small hair of a width just so that when you open it and opening it like that it's definitely not protruding and catching when you open it you don't want that okay 
make sure it's straight press that center piece and you've got your two pockets you may well have um, used a decorative punch and so then you do the same on the inside one so i'm just going to ascertain where my center glue is going to be yeah about there where my thumb is i was roughly right bead of glue across the center and then a bead of glue on three sides okay so this is going on so this is your d piece you've got if you've got one by the spine then when you open it you put it by the edge okay And that has now given strength to that page. Okay, next. <laughs> right, so that's H. What 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 comes after H? Oh, I think I need some more coffee. Let's have a look. Where am I? I'm on I, A and B. Okay. So I, A and B. I think you've got two lots of. Okay. So I... Yeah, so you've got two lots. So you're cutting two lots of A and two lots of B to create two large photo mats. So all you do is one is going to be larger than the other with a score line, okay, a half an inch score line. You put tape or glue on the dented side, you notch it, and then you remove your tape if you've used tape or add your glue if you've added glue and you literally put A onto B. It's so simple. Okay. Again, glue is definitely your friend because it helps you get things straight. First time, <laughs> not fifth time, Amanda. Okay. All right. And then that is one of the large photo mats. Okay, now that is going to go in there. Okay, and that's that section finished, apart from when you go to decorate it. So that's your large photo mat for there. And then that will close like so. Okay, this will come down. This will, no, this goes up, this comes down. Because this is slightly larger, so that overlaps there. And then you make your second eye photo mat and it's going to go in there. So let me just move that. So again, you glue all your tape on the bumpy side where you've scored. And another way of doing it is by just lining them both up like that. And then folding that score line over. That's a, an easier way of doing it. I don't know why I didn't think of that in the first place. <laughs> And then that slides in there and it will keep all of that section and component, it will keep it closed. So when you're making folios, what you don't want is sections where when you lift it up, they're flipping and flapping all over the place. So always think of a way, you know, if you come to making your own folios, hopefully you'll give it a go because it's awesome fun. Just think that you don't want bits flapping all over and, you know, if you've got waterfall sections or flips, you don't want them flipping everywhere. Okay, so you always think of ways to keep it all tidy and closed. Right, so that's I. So what we are now, J. So we're on our J piece and we are also going to do K. I believe these are both large pockets. Right, let's have a look. So J goes on the front okay so the easiest way to put things on from now on is to open all of your folio okay take any sections out and turn it over b is your front okay so j and k are ever so slightly different sizes so k goes on the back and J goes on the front. Now, the only thing you need to bear in mind here is that you've got it the right side up, okay? So just remember this is your front. That pocket there should be facing you like that with the opening there. That way you know you've got your project the right way up, okay? So J 
goes on the front and K goes on the back. All right. So again, we're making a large pocket. So we've got our score lines that intersect. We're cutting across the X. I pray. Let me just check that I'm in shock because I'm panicking a bit now. Yes, I am. <laughs> I do not want to have to redo the whole tutorial because you can't see. That would be a disaster. Right, where's my bone folder gone? Bone folder, where have you gone? No, where is it? It's really important to use your bone folder to, here we go, sorry about that, to, um, especially on pockets, because you want them to lay lovely and flat. Um, first of all, it looks neater. Second of all, it makes your life easier when you're gluing them down if it's all nice and neat. Okay, so let me just double check. Always double check if you're in any doubt. Look at your measurements again and double check. So K is the, let me check. So J is for the front and K is for the back. So you had to double check because they are slightly different sizes. Better to check than do it wrong. Um, J, front large pocket. So that's going on B, right. I'm getting in a bit of a tizzle on my desk. Let me just uh, reorganise myself. Right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the tape or add our glue, okay, and attach this onto the front. Again, if you're not sure what's the front, fold it all back up and double check. So this wants to be flush with the bottom of piece B on the on the front and it wants to be central now there is a bit of a gap either side so that bit of gap either side make sure you've got the same gap at the bottom it just makes it look tidier so you've got about what have you got about just about an eighth of an inch either side so leave the same kind of increment at the bottom as you've got either side and centralize it okay like that okay i think that's right yeah i lifted mine a little bit higher up on this on that one but it doesn't matter let me just make sure i've done that right yes yeah, that large pocket yeah okay and then we will do j I will always just, you know, hesitate and check that I've done it right because the last thing I want to do is show you something that's not correct. Okay. And this is going to go on the... Where are we? Let me just check. I've done that. I've done it wrong. Have I done it wrong? No, I haven't done it wrong. So that's the front. We're putting this on the back of A. That's the back, not there, here. That's why I was getting confused. And again, you want to centralise it. Okay. And put that on. Oops. Centralise it. There we go. So you've got J there and K there because that is the front and that is the back when it's closed. Okay, so this is A piece and this is B piece. Okay, so let me just quickly show you so you can see where we're at. So that's the flap of the D. Those are the two flaps that fold. That is your front cover, now has a J on it. Okay, it closes like that. If you turn it over, that's your back. It's now got K on it. Okay, it can be easy to get, uh, you know, get yourself confused. Right, so we've done J and K, so now we are on to L. Okay, let's have a look. 
those are our photo mats for inside so l is just a large photo book okay and it's going to go in the back pocket so let's just close it turn it over to our back pocket so this is l so again on the bumpy side i've got my tape and l a and l b just go together so again the quickest way to do it shortest piece on top of longest piece line them up and fold that over and that is your photo book for the back cover pocket okay and that will go in there like so okay come on get in don't be naughty does fit it's because i've done my wonka i've done my wonka if you find that any of your photo mats don't fit because you've screwed them on wonka just get your trimmer and just trim whilst it's folded and closed just trim a sliver off it's no bigger okay all right get in It don't want to go in. <laughs> I must have cut mine wrong. I must have cut mine a little bit off. Just bear with me. I'm just going to trim a little bit more off. The sizes are right because they are um, made from the original thing. I've probably just cut mine a little bit off. Okay. There we go. That fits in there perfect now. Right. So now we are on to our M piece. Now, the M piece is the shaker pocket, okay? If you don't want to do a shaker pocket, you can just make it into a normal pocket. Now, you will notice that we've scored on four sides, okay? So on the dented side, you're going to need tape or glue on three sides. And then you're going to put tape or glue on just the, decide what's the top, on just the top, okay, on the bumpy side. Because what that's going to do is these here are going to be our flaps to adhere to the folio to make it a pocket. And this top one here is going to fold over and cover up the top lip of the acetate so that what you put in the pocket doesn't stick okay so there's always method in my madness so how are we going to do this right so let me just grab my so what you want to do is you want to turn it onto the back okay so that means you've got all your score lines that are bumper you want to measure in from the edge in an inch okay so let me remind myself what's an inch on here one, two, three, four, right, that's an inch, right? Now, I'm lucky I've got my Tim Holtz ruler, which is see-through. I've also got similar things um, that are like quilting rulers, okay? So, all you do is draw an inch all the way around. You join yourself a frame. Okay, take your time and try and get this, you know, as accurate as you can. Okay, so then you've got a frame. Right. So what you want to do now is cut that frame out. Okay. So I'm using a blade. If you don't have a blade, you can quite easily use scissors. If you use a blade, make sure you've got one that's got like rubber on the back or something so it doesn't slip. If you're using a blade, be very careful. Please be careful. I don't want anybody slicing their fingers off. And then I'm going to line my um, non-slip ruler up as neat as I can. Now, if this is not perfect, don't worry. Okay. Take your time. I go very slow and very steady. Okay very slow and very steady i can see already i'm a little bit out from my 
pencil marks, but I'm not going to stress it too much. It's minimal. Okay. All right. Line it up. If you don't feel confident to do this, like I say, just leave it as a pocket, okay? You can still fold that flap over. It will just give you a strong pocket lip. But, you know, give it a try. If you're not confident straight away, try it on a, you know, a separate piece, a scrap piece or something like that and practice your cutting. So the blades that I use, these are not craft blades. This is a, just a general Stanley knife from the DIY section where you can get replaceable blades okay because craft knives they can be expensive okay just be careful with them right so whilst it's still on the back well no it's on its front <laughs> you've got the tape or the extra um at the top there we've got our acetate now i've given you the size to cut these and you want the skinniest tape you can find okay and the reason being you'll see Hopefully you can see there. Let me just check them in shot again. Yeah. So as you can see there, you can see my red line tape. You can also see the edges of the white cardstock underneath. So that indicates to me that when I put this on, that tape is not going to show at the other side. Okay. So the skinniest tape you can, I think this is quarter inch. Um... Red line is just the strongest tape you can. I don't advise um, the really, really cheap budget friendly tape that you get in, say, like the pound shop. or They're all right for card making, you know, or if you're just adding a little embellishment onto something. If you're constructing something, don't use them. They, you know, they've got the uses. Invest in good quality tape for things like this. Right, so now I'm going to add that on to my frame. So I'm I'm starting with the top and I'm looking either side to make sure it's even and I'm looking at the top to make sure that that tape is not going to show and then I'm committing, okay? Then I'm going to get my second piece. Now on my second piece, I'm just going to remove the tape on the bottom and the two sides. Okay. And then the top where I've still got tape, so it's not sticky, it's not going to stick to anything. Okay. I'm going to use that edge to line up perfect with the edge on the first piece. Okay. So you're almost pretending you're sticking it down, but you're not going to be sticking it down because your backing is still on your tape. Okay. So there, we're pretending we're sticking it down with the backing still on there, but we're pressing down the side and the bottom where the tape has been removed. That will help you line it up. Okay. Now this is still got our backing on. So we can now go in with our shaker elements, okay? You can open it, it's quite uh, flexible, and you can tip some shaker bits and bobs in there. Now this pocket is not gonna have loads of movement, so arrange where you want them, where you'd be happy, you know, they're just a little bit of a sprinkle, it's, it's just for fun. And then you've got to, and this is the tricky bit, is to get the tape off the inside lip, okay? So just lift it ever so slightly back. Just grab one corner, she says. And then pull. And that will pull out. And then give that a very firm press. And you've got your shaker pocket. Okay. Obviously, a true shaker, you'd have some sort of depth in there, but you have got some movement. Yeah, they'll still move about. Okay, just a little bit. And it's just adding interest. So now what you want to do is you want to fold and burnish those score lines for the pocket. Okay. 
okay and the top in fact uh shall we just leave the top no we need to fold and burnish the top as well don't forget the top is going to fold down onto the acetate these are going to attach to the inside you know to your project so then you want to cut across the x's all four of them check that they don't overlap okay and then decide which is your top if you haven't already added your tape you need to pick one side to be the top give it an extra burnish and then adhere that flat to the to the you know entire thing so what that's doing is it's covering up the lip of the acetate so it's not sharp it's covering it up so that when you put things in you've got a, a smooth entry point as it were and it's also going to strengthen that pocket so then now these flaps here are what you adhere to <laughs> your j pocket on the front cover okay so it's going to go on here and i'm wondering if i've got j and k mixed up hmm I'm starting to think I've cut my J pocket wrong because it, it should go flush. I'll check the size on the cutting guide. But this goes edge to edge. It doesn't actually matter anyway. It actually doesn't matter either way. Even if I've done it ever so slightly smaller, it, do, it doesn't matter. Okay. Remove the tip. And what we're going to do is I'm going to lay this down flat. So this is going to go, it's going to line up with the bottom and then it's going to go edge to edge with the edge of the cover. Okay. Up to the score line, but not over it. Okay. So on there and on there. Okay. So then we've got a pocket there and we've got a pocket there okay my pocket here looks a tiny little bit smaller than my original design but it doesn't matter it's still it's per in fact it's nice because it's like staggered like staggered pockets so it's perfect okay and you've still got a nice increment there to line your paper inside as well right so that is the shaker pocket done so now we are on to inside here so inside here we've got an n piece and the n piece is a long piece you fold and burnish those score lines and you're cutting across the x check that the flaps don't overlap when they're folded flat oh that one does ever so slightly if it overlaps okay trim from this side don't cut over those score lines okay i'm just going to trim a bit off there and double check that's better okay let me just move some of this mess from my desk and go up my bone folder so we're going to re-burnish these flaps to make sure they're lovely and flush and then you're going to, so your front cover's here, okay? It's going to go to this side, close to the spine. All right. I've put my tape on the wrong side. <laughs> so the other uh, downside to doing your tape first and thinking you'll be organised and getting ahead, I've put it on the wrong side, but... I'll just refold my card the other way, it's fine. Okay. 
because obviously this long side here with the flap is going against the spine and you want the opening there all right so i'm just going to turn mine that way because it makes it easier for me to she says get it straight so it wants to be straight is more important than flush with the spine so it wants to be flush with the top hopefully you can see so I'm making sure it's flush with the top first. That's my priority. Because if it's flush with the top, it'll go down straight and it will be flush with the bottom. And I'm just a hair width away from the score line. You don't want to be on the score line because if you are, then it will catch when you close it. Okay, so that's fine. So that's that pocket. And then you've got... two O pockets and the so one of them you want to fold and burnish and I've put my tape on the wrong side again on all three sides cut across the X cut across the X It doesn't matter how prepared you are or how careful you are, you will find that you might make the odd mistake. If something has been, you know, you've cut something ever so slightly too small, don't think, oh, it's no good. It's no good, I'll have to start again. Or I've wasted my card or my project's no good. Just roll with it. It doesn't matter. Just adapt it. So this will go on the bottom of N, okay? And flush side to side like so now the next o piece you want to um we've scored along the bottom but we're not going to fold the bottom we're just going to fold the two sides because what we want is we want a stacked pocket so we want this to sit just a sliver inside that one so rather than cut across the x what we're going to do is we're going to cut quite deep here up to the first score line where they meet but not across the x up to it okay and then here we're going to cut like that so we're not cutting just direct across the x it's a slightly different cut okay because in essence we're cutting this bottom one deeper than we would if it was a normal pocket then just fold it and just see if it, it will nestle just inside there okay and it should just nestle just inside your other pocket okay and it should just lay a nice like inside like that okay and check that before you glue it down okay because you can always readjust it but once it's glued down it's glued down so i've put tape on there we don't actually need to use that tape so i'm just going to remove the tape from here and i'm going to slide it in at one side right up and then in at the other side i'm going to make sure it's straight against the edge of there and against the edge of there and there you have got your stacked pocket and this pocket because you've not glued the bottom flap you've got the full length of that pocket see it's the full depth it looks like it's a short pocket but really it's a long pocket and then this one goes here okay so then you've got what are these for <laughs> so yeah um your two P pieces are just photo mats. So one goes in the large back pocket and this one goes in the smaller front pocket. And we don't think I gave sizes for this one because in my original, um, I did this afterwards in all honesty. So if you want this one, this measures... The cardstock measures six and three quarters 
by five and that's the final little one that just sits in the window i hadn't made that when i originally did mine it was an afterthought to just have so you've got stacks okay so that's the measurement for that one so that is your folio completed okay we just need to put in our large photo mats so one goes in there and then that closes obviously these are four by six or six by four same here you just make your own to go in there there's no exact sizes four by six there okay and then that closes and that goes in there now in my original one i added a little tab there just as a little extra embellishment but you don't have to from there all you need to do is decorate it with patterned papers okay and all i did for my closure was i added an eyelet to the center of there and then just wrapped my um, ribbon around it you don't even have to do that you can just wrap ribbon around it okay if you don't have an eyelet setter so when we cut in our patterned papers okay this is the rule of thumb so let's imagine we're doing this so this is the same principle no matter what you're doing you measure your size okay so this is should be six by six okay whatever size you want into mat you cut your paper a quarter of an inch shorter on the width and a quarter of an inch shorter on the height so for this six by six piece of card i would cut my paper to five and three quarters by five and three quarters that then gives you an eighth of an inch gap all the way around so that you've got this kind of a nice tidy look and it's the same principle throughout this i've cut in strips and i just did the same principle i just cut it just ever so slightly smaller because this is a smaller gap and the same with the spine you know if you started cutting it a quarter of an inch smaller you'd end up with a tiny sliver so these ones you just kind of do them by eye okay but the main focal areas you cut them a quarter of an inch shorter on the width and on the height the rest is just pure decoration all right and you can embellish or leave it plain do what you like you've got a nice substantial folio there once it's full and there are plenty of spaces to make and add your own photo mats for these pockets here okay i've left those up to your own creation so i hope that you've enjoyed uh, this class i hope i've explained it clearly remember the main thing is if you do something that's a tiny sliver of a measurement off it doesn't matter it happened with me here it doesn't matter it still looks fantastic my photo mat i must have measured it wrong <laughs> doesn't matter if you measure it wrong something wrong if it's just a photo mat just trim it it's fine nothing is a problem nothing needs to be perfect okay and you will find that as you go if you follow my classes through the months you will develop quite a few different ways of making folios and before you know it you'll be making your own thanks for watching take care and i'll see you again soon Bye.